This video is sponsored by Novium, but I'll talk more about that later. I've got several new Tesla 4680 battery updates to share with you, including a newly published patent application that reveals an improvement to a key piece of battery manufacturing equipment, plus some information from Elon Musk himself. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. You've probably heard it said that hindsight is 2020. And it makes sense when you're looking back at things that you did, it's easy to see what you would improve and maybe see the mistakes that you made. Well, during Tesla's 2025 annual shareholder meeting, Elon recently admitted that if he could go back in time, he'd likely make a major change to a key part of the manufacturing process for the 4680 batteries. Elon Musk specifically replying to a question about progress on manufacturing the cathodes with a dry process said, the dry cathode, man, that's turned out to be a lot harder than we thought. So it does look like it's going to be successful and it will have some cost advantage relative to wet cathode. But if I had to wind the clock back, I would probably have gone with wet cathode instead of dry cathode because it just turned out to be a lot harder to make it capable of high volume production with super high reliability. Now, as a reminder, Pretty early on, Tesla figured out how to manufacture the anode of the battery, the 4680 batteries with a dry process. That hasn't been quite as difficult as manufacturing the cathode side of the battery with a dry process. There's more than one reason for this, but I believe one of the big reasons comes down to the fact that graphite is much softer than the powders that they use for manufacturing cathodes. Thus, that hard material, that cathode material, it not only damages equipment, as has been mentioned in the past, but it appears like it's harder for them to get a good even layer on that foil when they're actually calendaring that material down onto the foil in order to make that battery cathode. Because of this, in the past at least, Tesla has struggled with high scrap rates and low yield rates for the manufacturing of their cathodes with this dry process. Even as recently as one year ago, Tesla had a 70 to 80% scrap rate for the dry cathodes they were producing. That was one year ago. I have no idea what the scrap rates look like right now, but I assume they're better than that. I sure hope they're better than that. But nonetheless, this process has been difficult. Another big problem has been these hard cathode materials damaging the equipment, the calendaring equipment specifically, I believe. And at least in the past, because this was very custom equipment, it could take up to 45 days to get these machines repaired when they broke down. So that of course hampers efforts quite a bit if you have like a 45 day downtime for a machine. In addition, in the absence of solvents, binding the hard cathode particles with dry polymers, like their PTFE that they use, and attaching them evenly to the foil is very tricky without liquids to get an even dispersion. This can result in uneven thickness, poor adhesion, and even delamination during winding, which of course would lead to some of those high scrap rates that I mentioned. Now it is interesting when you look back at Elon Musk language there, it looks like they're still having some issues with the dry cathode process because he used language that really indicated that in the future it was going to be successful. Elon specifically said once again, it does look like it's going to be successful and it will have some cost advantage relative to wet cathode. So even though it was confirmed last year that Tesla had prototype 4680 batteries with the dry cathodes, in a Cybertruck that they were testing. I don't know if Tesla is using dry cathodes in the current 4680 batteries that are in the Cybertruck. It's unclear, Tesla really hasn't confirmed that. They likely still have higher scrap rates than they would like with this dry cathode process and their 4680 batteries. It may be that they're still doing a mix. Maybe some of the Cybertrucks have dry cathodes and some have wet cathodes. Maybe they're all wet cathodes and they're still trying to figure out that process and get that perfected. I don't know, but once again, that language that Elon Musk used kind of pointed to the future with the future of it being successful. Now, there was a recently published Tesla patent application that details an improvement to a key piece of battery manufacturing equipment for Tesla. But before I discuss that, this portion of today's video is sponsored by Novium. 
If you've been watching this channel for very long, then you've definitely heard me talk about Novium hover pins and how much I love them. Now I'll say first off, if you have not bought one, why not? But also, now is one of the best times because their Black Friday sale is going on and it's one of the biggest discounts of the year. For the first 48 hours after the release of this video, you can get 20% off plus free shipping to most countries. Now, of course, Christmas is right around the corner and hover pins make a really memorable and high quality gift for someone on your list or even for yourself. For example, the innovative hover pin Interstellar is inspired by space and when placed in its base, it appears to be hovering at a 23.5 degree angle, mirroring the Earth's axial tilt. The hover pin Interstellar is also offered as a gift set with various accessories, including a nice notebook. In addition, if you prefer writing with a fountain pen, Novium also offers their hover pen Future with a two-in-one fountain pen rollerball configuration. To find out more and take advantage of the Black Friday promotion, click the link in the video description and use code CLEANERWATT at checkout. Once again, with that discount code, you can get 20% off for the first 48 hours after the release of this video and free shipping to most countries. And after 48 hours, that discount changes to 10%. Okay, moving to this recently published Tesla patent application, you can see specifically that it deals with the bearing block assembly for calendar rollers. The calendaring rollers are of course what flattens that electrode material to the foil. And so this is a very important part of that process that Tesla has had issues with. Now I do wanna point out here the two inventors that are listed on this patent application. You can see first of all, Matthew Matsumoto is listed. And according to his LinkedIn profile, he is a senior staff equipment design engineer at Tesla. And if you look at his description of his experience under Tesla, it lists design, build, test, implementation of novel next-gen manufacturing equipment for high volume, dry battery electrode lines for Tesla 4680 cells. The other inventor listed here is Bone Eggleston, who is the senior director of Tesla 4680. So with those two people involved, it's very likely that the technology mentioned here is already in use, and this is something that they've developed along the way. But nonetheless, moving to the wording of this Tesla patent application, bearing block assemblies are used in a variety of applications to support cylindrical rollers. In calendaring applications, the bearings in these assemblies support the calendar rolls, while the calendar rolls are subjected to high loads, which are necessary to calendar hard materials. For example, bearings may be supported in the horizontal direction by applying a tension force between the adjacent bearing block assemblies. However, such assemblies may not sufficiently support bearings when calendaring hard materials, such as cathode battery active materials, example, lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt oxide, NMC. Accordingly, there is a need for a bearing block assembly with improved support for a calendar roll. I will put a link to this Tesla patent application down in the video description if you wanna read through this, but I'm not gonna take the time to actually describe in detail the technology and the way that Tesla is designing the bearing block assemblies here. But in reference to this new design, it's written here, quote, such bearing configurations advantageously reduce minute bearing play, increases bearing stiffness, and or reduces bearing vibration when calendar rolls are subjected to high loads when calendaring material. Because bearing play and vibrations are reduced and bearing stiffness is increased, bearing wear is reduced and the quality of the calendared material is improved. So with this new and improved bearing block assembly in place that is described here in this Tesla patent application, it looks like it's going to lower, if it has not already, lower the scrap rates for their dry cathode manufacturing process, which of course means a higher yield. That's really important and I hope that technology is living up to what is described here in this Tesla patent application. With that being said though, as a reminder, even with the difficulties that Tesla has had, with their 4680 battery manufacturing. It was made public earlier this year that as compared to buying in battery cells from other battery manufacturers, manufacturing their own 4680 batteries is lower cost. So they have reached a very important milestone where it is less expensive for them to put 4680 batteries in, for example, the Cybertruck 
than purchasing batteries from a supplier and putting those in that vehicle. That is key. Now, I believe they're going to drop cost a lot more, but the fact that they've reached at least that threshold is very important. Now, in the past, I've talked about 4680 battery production estimates and where Tesla was in the ramp up process. However, that doesn't appear to be very important right at this moment for this current conversation. It will be important for 12, 18 months or so from now, but right at this moment, I believe they have more 4680 battery production capability than they're using because they really aren't manufacturing and selling very many cyber trucks right now. I mean, if you go back to March of last year, at that point, Tesla was already at a 4680 battery production run rate where in a single week's time, they were able to produce enough batteries for 1,000 Cybertrucks worth of battery packs. So that means more than a year ago, they had reached a run rate to where even if they were building 50,000 Cybertrucks per year, they would have at that point still had enough 4680 batteries to build those vehicles. However, Tesla really hasn't been selling very many Cybertrucks this year. According to the Cox Automotive Electric Vehicle Sales Report for Q3 2025, they estimated that Tesla between Q1 and Q3 sold around 16,097 Cybertrucks. In Q3 of 2025, they estimate that they sold 5,385 Cybertrucks. When you compare this to Q3 of 2024 and Q1 through Q3 of 2024, you can see that they're likely going to sell less than 25,000 Cybertrucks in the full year of 2025. So they likely have quite a bit more 4680 battery manufacturing capabilities than they're actually able to use right now. So the run rate for 4680 batteries right at this moment doesn't matter that much. What matters more importantly right now is really getting the process dialed in so that in the near future, when they need to ramp that up, they have everything dialed in. I say this because currently the 4680 batteries are only used in the Tesla Cybertruck, but Elon during that annual shareholder meeting confirmed once again that 4680 batteries are planned to be used in several other products. Elon said, and then also at this factory referring to Gigafactory Texas, we also make the 4680 cell, which is getting better and better. In that 4680 cell, it is being used in the Cybertruck and will be used in the Cybercab and also in Optimus. So that's going well. In addition, on the screen during that presentation, it listed Tesla Semis as a recipient of 4680 batteries in the future. So if you fast forward to the not too distant future, Tesla is almost done with the mass production semi factory. So if you add that up, you can see that in the not too distant future, Tesla needs to really be manufacturing at least 100 gigawatt hours of 4680 batteries per year to be able to really meet these plans that they've laid out. And really that needs to go up quite a bit more than that because these numbers are just for 1 million Optimus units and 1 million cyber cabs. Of course, I gave you the numbers for every million and I hope there are more than 1 million cyber cabs built per year in the, in the future. And I hope there are more than 1 million Optimuses built per year in the future. Of course, we don't know what the future is gonna hold, but of course, Elon Musk has big plans for those products. With all that being said, while the Tesla 4680 battery program has been slow going, it appears like it will make a meaningful impact in the coming years, and it looks like Tesla's hard work is beginning to pay off. Do remember to check out Novium Hover Pens by clicking the link in the video description. And once again, if you use code CLEANERWATT at checkout, you can get 20% off for the first 48 hours after the release of this video, plus free shipping to most countries, and after 48 hours, that discount drops to 10%. I would also like to say thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.